Walt Disney was one of the 20th century's most forward-thinking and technologically innovative filmmakers. Yet many of his greatest movies and theme park attractions had their origins in some of the oldest stories ever told. Fairy tales. Fairy tales are always a way to explore the complexity of life, and I think that's part of why they create such powerful cinematic stories as well, because you are transported and immersed in a world where you can feel emotions, you can cry, you can laugh, but you're safely in a seat in a movie theater going through it. These are things that Mark was working on for a new idea for another show at Disneyland. This was going to be a ride that Mark had designed for the hot summer days, and they would be kept very cold. So you'd walk in from the hot, terrible weather outside, and you'd have this wonderful, cool weather to yeah. keep you cool. I'm all for that. I was, it was about time was going for to be it. the most yeah. popular attraction, yeah, especially in the <laughs> summer months. Mark Davis started as an animator. Always been a huge fan of Mark's. I looked up to him and his draftsmanship and, and the actual animation and his character designs, just gorgeous. He was one of the nine old men. And then eventually started designing attractions for Walt Disney World and Disneyland. And one of those attractions was the Enchanted Snow Palace. It was amazing to us to see the artwork though, because there are a lot of things that we, we said, wait a minute, this is like what we were, were doing. We um, were channeling we were Mark channeling and we didn't Mark. even know it. Yeah. We ended up with a braid for our Snow Queen uh, character, just one like side, that. Just off to one side, just like that. And also Elsa's cape that we ended up with has this very, has this not quite exactly pa same pattern, but almost. I love the colors. They're so, they're, they're all the white and the blue. Nice with and the subtle. subtle. Yeah. And cold. Cold. <laughs> After the success of Snow White in the late 1930s, Walt Disney went back to the creative well of fairy tales, looking for stories for his future productions. Mark went to Scandinavia because Walt wanted him to look into some books and things there, and he came back with a lot of information for Walt. Mark thought the Hans Christian Andersen stories were very interesting and short stories that they could do short films on, too. I think that Walt was attracted to the Hans Christian Andersen stories because he's the same kind of storyteller. Walt would tell very rich, very deep, sometimes dark stories, but also had the whimsy and the humor, and it would take you to another world. It was 1939 that Walt had given the Snow Queen a production number, 1092. There was talks about doing a biography of Hans Christian Andersen, working with MGM to do the live action and Disney would do the animation. But we don't know what happened to that. So it's this huge mystery, wondering what drew him to the Snow Queen and what he was hoping to do. Yeah. Well, how about the one we've always wanted to do and never got around to? It's likely that the Snow Queen was intended to be one of the animated sequences in the Hans Christian Andersen biography. But despite Walt Disney's interest, no evidence of creative work on the project has yet been found in the Disney archives. The only Hans Christian Andersen story to go into production at the time was the silly symphony's The Ugly Duckling. There was some early development of Hans Christian Andersen's story The Little Mermaid with art by Kai Nielsen, but that too was eventually shelved. It would be another 40 years before The Little Mermaid reached the screen, and 70 years before the Walt Disney Animation Studios would bring Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen to life in the movie Frozen. Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Snow Queen, is very poetic, it's very symbolic, it's episodic, and I think that's what was the greatest challenge of, of trying to crack the story. Love will thaw. Love. Of course. We took the original theme from the original Snow Queen, and that was love conquers negativity. And for us, the negativity for today is fear. So we took basic things, combined characters, and tried to somewhat simplify the story, and then we added a lot of humor to it also. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. He was so marvelous with bears. Fantastic. Yeah. Like you could reach out and touch them. <laughs> and I love the way he's used his brush all through here. It's like you feel frost. Yeah, I don't know how he did it. Maybe it was 
like wet on wet or something yeah. that has that got that really organic shape for he the would little get snowflakes. The, paint the color that he wanted it, and sometimes he would speak, sprinkle a little bit of salt into it, and right. it would go. Psh. I wish we had um, thought to put salt in the computer. In that the computer, that would have helped. <laughs> yeah, we, we would have been done two we, years earlier. I know that's all we need to do. It's great. We have in our ice palace this, these this grand foyer steps rising up and Elsa's poised right at the top. But building that environment was probably the hardest thing we did in the film, um, technically. There's this beautiful painting with the aurora borealis sweeping the sky and the stars twinkling, and it felt right out of Frozen to us. And uh, But we were in awe of what he did with paint, and we were trying to do with CG, computers. Which is and, yeah. uh, almost impossible because the computer does everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. And what Mark had done had a very organic feel to it because it was handmade. They need to make this, finally make right. this attraction, yeah. yeah. Maybe they will. <laughs> Meeting Alice was such a treat. She's so talented herself being a costume designer for Small World and lots of other films that Walt had done. When I went to work doing the costumes for Small World, I said to Walt, what is my budget on this? And when he got slightly disturbed in that, one eyebrow would go up and you knew you were in a bit of trouble. So <laughs> he said, remember this, when you're working here, you give everybody more than they expect. You give them the best you can. If you do that, they'll always come back. If you cheat them, you'll never see them again. What I loved about Walt Disney's approach was it was about the work and about pushing your imagination farther than you ever thought you could. Everything he did had quality. It was never about cutting corners. He would always strive to do things that were excellent and things that were going to last forever and ever. That was how he worked, and that, I feel like, is how we work today. And there's no greater creative experience than that.